ready to the countdown. Congratulations! This live broadcast is specially brought to you by Academy YouTuber Malaysia, an initiative by EDD Malaysia and Kelab Guru Malaysia. Please pay attention. The live broadcast will begin shortly. The link to the certificate of attendance will be provided at the end of the session. Please make sure it is filled within the stipulated time. Thank you. Okay, bismillah. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. And good evening to all teachers, parents, and the wonderful students. Welcome to Pusatushan Academy YouTuber, a joint venture with EDD Malaysia and Club Guru Malaysia with the hashtag Bermuda Percuma, Selamanya Percuma. Before we proceed, let's begin our session with the recitation of Umul Kitab Al-Fatiha for the Muslim and a moment of silence for the non-Muslim. Al-Fatiha. So how's everyone today? So my prayer that every, everyone is in the best of health and ready to proceed with our today's class. So before we start, let me introduce myself first. My name is Noon Binti Muhammad No. You can call me Madam Noon. I am lecturer from College Matriculasi Negeri Sembilan. I am your moderator for today's class. So the most important... Uh, sorry... So the most important person today is our passionate and fantastic presenter, Madam Rosmaya. She is a very experienced teacher from SMJK Yuhua Kajal Selangor. So let us give a warm welcome to our presenter. For the record, we are now live on Madam Rosmaya channel. So as a sign of support to Madam Rosmaya for the hard work in preparing to this lesson, please subscribe her channel. Uh, as usual, the lesson will last approximately one hour. The certificate link and the credit claim link will be given at the end of this session. So remember that you can only use EDD email to claim the certificate. For the credit claim, you need to collect the one letter and a five-digit code which will be announced separately during our class today. So be sure to follow the class up until the end to get the complete code for the credit claim. I will also like to remind all of you, if you wish to post comment in the chat box, please use appropriate language and use appropriate profile picture. I am pretty sure all students here are excellent students who will uphold a positive classroom, classroom environment. Please give your full cooperation in making this class a lively one. Stay focused. And if you have any question, please write on the chat box and we will try to provide you with the answers. Before I give Madam Rosmaya to present, I will announce the first digit uh, code for the credit claim. The first letter and two digit code is A29. Okay, A29. A29. Yes. Okay. So without further ado, please welcome Madam Rosmaya to start her presentation. Okay, Madam Rosmaya. Okay. Uh, thank you uh, to Madam Noon. Okay, so now uh, my slide, okay, open already. Okay, so I'm going uh, to introduce uh, the pre-U teams that we have in Academy YouTuber. Okay, this is physics team. Okay, uh, I'm the leader and uh, teacher known. Okay, also uh, one of the member of our team. Okay, we also have uh, mathematic teams. Okay, lead by teacher Im. Okay, biology preview leads by uh, Cikgu Faiza. Okay, chemistry preview teams lead by uh, Cikgu Shahnun. 
and economy uh, account and economy lead by uh, madam fizi okay so academy youtuber also has has apps where you can download it from google play store and there are a lot of videos there including the physics videos okay you can get from there okay so now we have come to the uh, main objective for today's live tuition class okay so we are going to do some revision uh, on topics magnetic fields yeah uh, part one okay so we are going to solve a few questions i have posted the link to the pdf question uh, in the chat box okay and also uh, in the description part eh, below this video okay so we start with question one okay so let us read the question together okay if q is the positive electric charge v is the charge motion b is the magnetic field and f is the direction of the magnetic force then the right figure for the charge across the magnetic field is okay so we have the answer given here a b c d so which one is the right figure okay okay so we use uh, fleming's left hand rule okay so you uh use the fleming's left hand rule to to direct your fingers eh, uh, for which one eh, for f for v first okay for v and for the what you call this uh magnetic field direction eh, cross shows the magnetic direction into the screen here b magnetic field into the screen and then the v is the direction of the motion uh, of positive uh, charge here given here okay so the v so you position uh, the your Fleming's left hand rule so that the direction the correct direction will be uh, a yeah? okay because uh, f is here okay lastly you refer to the f um, your thumb shows direction of the uh, magnetic force so it's to the left so the answer is a okay uh, you can turn around your uh, Fleming's your, your hand here so that uh, which one it, it suit the answer eh? so b c d it doesn't suit this one eh? the your uh Fleming's left hand eh? uh, finger eh? uh, so the, the answer is a okay so next we go to question two to those who have done the question okay you can write uh, your answer in the chat box so that i can see uh, and i know uh, and, and also if you have problem you can write there in the chat box eh? Uh, so that we can discuss together where you not understand eh? okay so question two now we go to question two so if q is the negative electric charge okay this time is the negative electric charge eh? so be careful with the charge mentioned in the question so v is the charge motion and b is the magnetic field okay f is the direction of the magnetic force so this time how are we going to use the Fleming Fleming left hand rule okay so uh, the correct answer is b so those who got the answer very good okay so you position your hand okay uh so that uh, it suits eh, uh, any of the uh, here given lah, eh, a b c d okay so b is the correct one because you see v is in this direction and then the magnetic field is into the screen uh, but you the finger at uh, your thumb shows direction of f but be careful because this is negative, right? negative electric charge. So you need to turn around for a negative electric charge. Eh? Uh, so therefore, the force direction is upward. Eh? Uh, for definition of, uh, if you use Fleming's left hand rule, the direction of the um, motion of the charge eh, is for positive charge. Eh? But for negative charge, you need to make it opposite okay the direction opposite so b is supposed to be this way because this is for positive charge direction so b is into the screen so therefore f is upward okay so the answer is b okay next uh, we go to question uh, three okay question three Okay, an airplane accumulates an excess positive charge of 2.5 times 10 to the power of negative 5 coulomb. 
So what is the magnetic force on the airplane when passing at 250 meter per second through and perpendicular to the earth magnetic field? Okay, it's given that uh, the earth magnetic field is B equals to 5.0 times 10 to the power of negative 5 Tesla. Okay? The unit for magnetic field. Magnetic field eh, is Tesla. Okay, so how to imagine this? Okay, the airplane. Okay, the magnetic field perpendicular magnetic to the earth magnetic field. Okay, so downward. And the motion of the uh, airplane is this way. Okay, from top view. Top view. Okay, this is the charge accumulate to in uh, in the uh, airplane. Okay, this one is from top view. And the motion of the airplane is here. Eh? Uh, cross means uh, the magnetic field is uh, into the screen eh, if I refer to this diagram. Okay, so the formula you need to memorize is uh, F equals to QBB sine theta. Okay, for the magnitude of the magnetic force. Because this is for charge, eh? formula for the motion of charge and magnetic force uh, experienced by this charge eh? when moved in, in the existence of magnetic field is given by F equals to QVB sine theta. Okay, so why sine theta here? Uh, because uh, the B and B must perpendicular to each other. Eh? Okay. So, you substitute all the values given here into the equation. Okay. And perpendicular means the angle is 90 degrees. Okay. So, sine 90 degrees is 1. So, the F is QBB only lah. Eh? Okay. So, the answer is 3.125 times 10 to the power of negative 7 Newton. So, the answer, best answer is C, eh? 3.1 times 10 to, to the power of negative 7 Newton. Okay, when you round this off, so you get C. Okay, so that's the answer. Okay, looks like no one uh, do the question, yeah? Uh, uh, but if you have done, you can write there in the chat box, eh? Do not worry if you got wrong, it's okay. Okay, so now we go to the question 4. Okay, question four. Uh, an electron moves with a speed V near a bar magnet. Okay, so given here bar magnet. Which diagram shows the electron E? Uh, once you read the question, be careful. Eh? Electron, this is electron with, which is uh, which has negative charge. Eh? Okay, experiencing the maximum magnetic force. Okay. From the formula here, F equals to QBB sine theta. So, maximum uh, magnetic force means that at sine 90, eh, if you substitute other than 90 degrees, let's say sine 20 or sine 50, so your value or magnitude of magnetic force is always less than QBB. Eh? Uh, you can try and use your calculator to try to substitute sine 20 or sine 50. So maximum, it is understood that sine theta here is sine 90 degrees. So that means the B and V must always perpendicular to each other. Theta here is the angles between B and V. Eh? So must always perpendicular to each other. So which one shows the direction of the V and B uh, perpendicular or 90 degrees? Okay. Okay, so the answer is C yeah? because E here, the electron move this way and the B direction is uh, upward. So it doesn't mention here which one is north and south. So just uh, assume that uh, it's north here, okay, or, or south here. So B and B always perpendicular to each other. Eh? So A, B and D, they are not uh, perpendicular to each other, eh? B and B. So the answer is C, okay, to get the maximum magnetic force. Okay, so now we go to the question five. Okay, so we read the question. A charge is accelerated from rest through a potential difference and then enters a uniform magnetic field oriented perpendicular to its path. So the field deflects the particle into a circular arc of radius r. So if the accelerating potential V is tripled, so the radius of the arc will now be 
Okay, so this is the answer. Which one is the answer? A is 3R, B is 3R, uh, C is 9R, D is 27R. Eh? Okay, got typing mistake here. I'll double the, the answer here, B, C, D. But it's okay. So you must know that when a charge entering the magnetic field, okay, what happened to the charge? Eh, it will follow a circular path. Okay, circular path. If the uh, so we can use the uh, circular, uh, we can use the centripetal force provided by the magnetic force because this is involves circular motion. Okay. So from the given uh, F equals to QBB, so sine 90, I didn't show uh, because uh, it is understood here that it, it is perpendicular eh, to its B and B is perpendicular to each other. So sine 90 is one. So I didn't write here. And then because of the motion is circular, circular motion. So we can use centripetal force mv squared per r. And this centripetal force is provided by the magnetic force. So we can equate this. So you get, you get this equation. mv squared per r equals to qbb. Okay, so now you can rearrange this uh, equation because we want the radius. Eh? So what happened to the radius? So the radius of the arc now be what? Eh? Okay, so you rearrange here, you get R equals equals to MVQB. Okay, now the problem is V not given. Okay, V not given. Uh, the questions only give radius R and uh, potential, acceler accelerating potential, difference V. So we don't know V. So V, we can use a principal uh, law of conservation of energy. Okay, law of conservation of energy or principle of conservation of energy. So the change in energy is uh, kind of, uh, QV eh, to the kinetic energy. Okay, kinetic energy. So we use law of conservation of energy. So half mv squared equals to QV. So we can see the V. Now uh, we have V in the equations here. Okay, so you get V, okay, cross multiply here, you get V equals to square root of 2 QV per M. Okay, so this M is mass of the charge. Eh? Uh, Q is the charge. So you can substitute into the V value here. So you get this. Okay, so now you can see that M is a uh, charge itself has a mass M. So it's a constant. B also, the magnetic field is constant. Okay, and the charge Q. So therefore, we can see from here that yeah, R is uh, directly proportional to the set B. Okay, R is directly proportional to the set B. Okay, from, from here, you can uh, form the equation. Okay, because R is directly proportional to set B. So you can use ratio method. R2 per R1 will be equals to the set B2 per set V1. So you can use ratio method uh, because this is directly proportional. Okay, so now you can substitute uh, the values given as a symbol here R and V into the equation. So R2 is what we are going to find. Okay, what happened to the radius? Okay, R is the initial, okay, R uh, of radius and initial potential is V and then uh, it's become, uh, okay, set uh, 3 B okay so you cancel the triple eh? triple so uh, 3 V eh? the V becomes 3 V okay triple so that's that's where the 3 comes from okay so we cancel the V so you get R2 is set 3 R so the answer is B okay hmm. okay hopefully uh, you all can understand why the answer is B. This is this question I always give students. Eh? So uh, student, my student always make mistake on this question. So that's why I purposely give you all also this question so that you can answer, uh, you can understand better eh? Okay, how we get this answer. So the answer is set 3 R. Okay, so next we go to question 5. Eh? Uh, question six just now question five okay question six already okay we read the question together an electron is accelerated from rest by a potential difference of 330 volt 
So it then enters a uniform magnetic field of magnitude 220 milli tesla. Okay, be careful with the unit. This is milli tesla. Okay, with its velocity perpendicular to the field. So perpendicular, it is understood that theta here 90 degrees. 90 degrees. So calculate the speed of the electron and the radius of its path in the magnetic field. Okay. So, to imagine this, okay, you can imagine uh, here is the uh, uh, velocity selector, okay, where we can uh, accelerate eh, the electron to the area where we have um, magnetic field, okay, 220 millitesla here. So, again, I repeat what happened to the uh, electron, so it will follow a circular path. You can use Fleming's left-hand rule to determine the direction. But uh, we we don't do this uh, do that lah. Eh? You can use uh, your own hands, your Fleming's left hand rule, uh, to show the direction of the magnetic force. So it will follow this path, lah, eh? Follow this path. Okay. So we concentrate on question A, the speed. Okay. The well, how to find the speed of the electron. Okay. If you uh, concentrate on the question previous previous question, so you can use the. Um, you can use the principle of conservation of energy okay, uh, to find the speed of the electron. Okay, so use the principle of conservation of energy or law of conservation of energy. So the EV, okay, this is part where the energy of the uh, electron, okay, then it is converted to the kinetic energy in this part. So change in kinetic energy will be half mv squared. Okay, so now to get the speed, and we rearrange the equation here to get V. So, <coughs> it's square root 2 EV per M. Okay, so we substitute the 330 volts here. And the charge of electron is 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. So, this is a constant. Okay, in the question, usually, usually they give you the constant value. Okay, then the mass of the electron. Okay, the mass of electron. In your calculator, also you can get eh, uh, the these two values, constant value. So, the mass of electron is 9.11 times 10 to the power of negative 31. Eh? Okay, so you calculate, you get 1.08 times 10 to the power of 7 meter per second. Okay, so uh, you write this in more than... Two significant figures, so three significant figures, okay, because we are going to use it in question B, okay, so that you uh, don't get uh, the so get so that you get the answer within the range of the marking scheme, okay. Uh, so this is three significant figures uh, I wrote here, okay. So now we go to question B, the radius of its path in the magnetic field. So what do you think uh, we? can use if you refer to the previous question okay for if the question here asks for radius uh, what must you have in your uh, mind eh? uh, so automatically in your mind you use a centripetal force eh, concept where the centripetal force is provided by the magnetic force okay in this area you can see how the electron move in a circular path right uh, so uh, we can use a centripetal force provided by the a magnetic force. Okay, so centripetal force is mv squared per r and the magnetic force is qvb. Right? Okay, so you equate them so you get r. So substitute all the values given the b uh, from here, uh, the, the v, uh, this is v, so the v from here and then the uh, be careful with the unit to the B eh, magnetic field uh, 220 milli tesla. Okay, convert to tesla. Okay, so your answer when you calculate you get uh, 2.8 times 10 to the power of negative 4 meter. Okay, so that's the answer, the radius. Next, uh, if you don't understand, you can write there in the check box. Eh? Still no one answer there, um, Madam Nun. Okay, hopefully they understand us. Okay, now we go to the next question. Okay, we read together the question. A positively charged particle P and a negatively charged particle Q. Okay, you see we have two. 
kind of charge, one positive, one negative, are projected into a magnetic field at the same speed. If the magnitude of the char charges are the same, okay, the charge same, the speed also same, okay, uh, the mass is different, eh? the mass, uh, the mass is uh, MP equals to 2 MQ, okay, so one of their mass double, eh? uh, double. So which diagram shows the correct path of P and Q in the magnetic field? So which one is the correct one? So again here, you need to combine uh, what we have uh, discussed in the previous lesson, uh, in the pre previous slide, okay? Okay, first, uh, what we have discussed before, previous, les uh, previous lesson, sorry, previous uh, slide, yeah? previous slide. So we have positive and negative charge. So what does this mean? this mean? If positive and negative charge, two different charges, they will, uh, they will have different uh, direction of magnetic force. So D won't be the answer, right? Eh? Uh, so we cross this. This is not the answer. Okay. What else? And the mass is double. When the mass is double, they won't have the same radius, right? So A also we cancel. Eh? It's not the answer because the mass double. So they don't. Uh, they won't. Uh, uh, they won't move in the same uh, radius. Okay. So the answer now left B and C. Which one? Okay. We are now. Now uh, we use uh, Fleming's left hand rule to determine the direction of the uh, of the what you call this um, direction of the motion eh, of the uh, charge. And before that, okay. Before that, uh, I'm going to discuss uh, why here. Uh, for different mass, eh, the radius won't be the same. Okay, uh, just to to uh, do revision just now. I I repeat many times. Eh, I repeat many times. It's okay eh, for you to do because this is revision. Okay, so F C centripetal force is provided by the magnetic force. So you use this. Eh, you use this to show that uh, the circular path doesn't have uh, same radius if different mass is used, eh? different mass of charge. So you equate them and you get R equals to mv per qb. This is what we've done before, right? Uh, so you see uh, the vqb is a constant mentioned in the question. Okay, same speed, same charge. Okay, same speed, same charge. So therefore, R is directly proportional to m. So if the m larger, so that's mean R also larger, right? Uh, given here the mass 2 mq, so mp is larger than mq. So mp will have, uh, will have a larger uh, r, right? Uh, mp will have larger, uh, larger r. Okay, rp larger than rq from this uh, equation. Okay, so now we can answer b and c. So one has larger radius, the other one smaller radius. This is why, eh? this is why. Okay, the reason. Okay, now to determine the direction. The direction for question, uh, for answer B and C. Rita Bai. Yes. Okay, uh, Q is the smaller radius. So you use Fleming's left hand rule. Okay, you will find that, okay, P, this one is correct in this direction. Okay, and then for the electron, you need to turn this around. So this is show the direction of the uh, electron, okay, uh, not a uh, negative charge, okay, so the answer is B, okay, so C is not the answer, okay, and then uh, another one, MP is larger, right, so RP will be larger, okay, uh, but the direction, this two BC, the direction, you must use Fleming's left hand rule, so you combine all that we have discussed before to answer this kind of question, okay, uh, so this question actually is a Hot question lah. You need to, to think eh. Uh, use uh, all the what we have discussed before to this. Apply it to this question. Okay. So. Uh, uh, Madam Rasnaya. Yeah. We have run our class almost 30 minutes. So do you want to take a break for a while? Uh, uh, okay, okay. We can eh? take a break. All mm -hmm. right. So uh, let's watch the advertisement everyone eh. We take a break. Berita baik untuk semua. Kini, Akademi YouTuber memperkenalkan sistem mata ganjaran kredit Ayu untuk dikumpul.
Jom ikuti kelas tuition live Ayu untuk mengumpul kredit Ayu dan berpeluang menebus hadiah-hadiah yang menarik. Hadiah bernilai lebih RM10,000 disediakan secara percuma untuk pelajar seluruh Malaysia. Apa tunggu lagi? Tebus ganjaran hebat ini sekarang. Layari www.academyoutuber.com untuk maklumat lanjut. Uh, okay everyone, so uh, before we proceed, uh, I want to announce the third digit code for the credit claim. Okay, so please listen carefully. The third digit code is number four. Okay, the third digit code is number four. So, uh, okay, Madam Rosmaya, I think you can proceed with your uh, presentation. Okay, so thank you, Madam Non. So we continue with question eight. Okay, we read the question. Okay, the figure shows a proton moving with a speed of 1.0 times 10 to the 6 meter per second in a direction perpendicular to a uniform magnetic field B of flux density 0 0.25 Tesla out of the plane of this page. So calculate the radius of the circular path. So you are given here. Okay, the charge entering the magnetic field, which direction shows here. Okay, dot here means the direction is out of the screen. Okay, out of the screen. So the B direction, eh, out of the screen. Okay, so this is a proton positive charge. Eh? So given the speed, uh, charge proton, and then the B, 0 0.25 Tesla. Okay, so this is the B. Okay, so F equals to QBB. So do you realize that we keep on repeating this, right? Uh, hopefully by referring uh, to the mm -hmm. what we discussed today, right? Uh, you can understand and and you can um, uh, your your what this one can stay longer right, in your mind, yeah, in your brain. We keep on repeating this, right? Uh, can stay longer in your mind. Okay, so combine these two again, yeah. Uh, so we get. R equals to MV per QB. Okay, so substitute all these values. So the answer is 0 0.0418 meter. Okay, uh, so hopefully by doing a lot of questions like this, all this eh, can hold longer in your brain. Okay, so next uh, we go to question 9. Okay, question 9. What is the force on a wire of length 0 0.05 meter placed inside a long solenoid near its center and making an angle of 30 degrees with the axis of the solenoid? So the wire carries a current of 10 ampere okay, and the magnetic field due to the solenoid is 0 0.2 tesla. Okay, you see, they can give you many situations eh, for the magnetic field eh, provide. Uh, uh, in the questions and eh, situation given. So in this case, it's in the solenoid. So you must understand that uh, magnetic field inside a solenoid is constant. Eh? Uh, so given here 0 0.2 Tesla. Okay, so L given, theta given. You must always check the theta given. Eh? Remember that angle theta is between B and V. Eh? B and V. Okay, so this is angle theta given is between the B, okay, and the motion, eh? uh, because uh, it's, it's center, it, uh, the, uh, the force, uh, the length of wire is, um, is positioned at the center of the solenoid. Okay, and this time it involves not charge, eh? it's involved uh, wire, eh? uh, length, wire of length 0 0.05 with current flow through it. So this time the formula is not QVB cos uh, QVB sin theta but it's F equals to BIL sin theta. Okay. Uh, so this is the formula for magnetic force on the current carrying conductor. So you must know the difference between these two formula. Okay. So this is direct question. You can just substitute all the values given here. Then the answer is uh, 0 0.05 Newton. 
Okay, so that's the answer. We go to question 10. Okay, now we concentrate on the uh, magnetic force on a current carrying wire. Okay, so the previous question is on magnetic force on a moving charge. So next, starting question 9, we are going to concentrate on magnetic force on a current carrying wire. Okay, so again here, eh, we have a wire here, 50 centimeter length. Okay, this wire, 50 centimeter length. And the mass is 12.5 gram, suspended by a pair of flexible spring okay, in a magnetic field. Okay, uh, induction 0 0.450 Tesla. Okay, the direction shown here is a uh, cross, eh? cross, that means out of the, uh, into the screen. Okay, so what are the magnitude and direction of current? Required to remove the tension in the supporting spring. Okay, so we are going to find the magnitude and also direction of the current. Okay, so L is given, mass is given, then the, um, magnetic field. Okay, so we are going to find current Okay, by remove the tension. So first, uh, what is, think of what is, uh, for, what are the forces act on the wire here? So we have tension in the spring, we have width, eh, mg, and therefore, for to remove the tension in the spring, so the force must act upward. Uh, this is because we want to remove the tension. If we want to remove the tension, so that means T is zero, okay, T is zero. So the force must act up, upward, eh, the force, uh, magnetic force must act upward so that it balanced by the mg. So this is what you need to understand, okay? So the force is not downward, eh? Um, the force is upward to remove the T tension. Because if T is zero, so if there is no other force upward, so it's not possible lah, eh, for the station to occur, okay? Mm. So now uh, T zero, so the equations become uh, F is a magnetic force eh, by the wire given BIL. So it's already perpendicular. So sine 90 degrees is one. So BIL equals to the weight mg and you can get the current. Okay. So the current required is, okay, substitute all this value into the equation and you get the answer is 0 0.545 ampere. But we have two answers here. So which one? Now we go to the direction. Okay, direction. So you need to use the Fleming's left hand rule. Okay, so you position your hand like this. So uh, now you need to refer to the force upward, force upward. And the cross here shows the magnetic field into the screen. Okay, so that means the current direction is to the right. Okay, mm, so the answer is uh, D. Okay, not? Okay, so now we go to question 11. Okay, the questions become harder and harder. Okay, question 11. A short length of bare copper wire, PQ. Okay, we have a copper wire here, PQ. is placed uh, in guides. Yeah, in guides. So, this is the guides. Which are fixed and made of wires. Okay, so in between the poles of a magnet. Okay, so this is the pole of magnets as shown in the figure. So state and explain what happens to the copper wire PQ when the switch is closed. Okay, initially the switch here is open. So what happened? Okay, so the question asked uh, to state. So you just state. Uh, so this, uh, the wire PQ, this PQ is the wire, okay, leaps up and down in the guide. So it will leaps up and down, okay, non-stop, uh, up and down, okay, in the wire. When you switch this on, uh, okay, when you switch this on. So now explain. So how to explain? So to explain, you start with the switch close. When the switch here close, okay, what happened? There's a current flow. So which direction? So look at the terminal of the battery. Uh, so the current flow in the uh, anti-clockwise, right? Uh, okay, anti-clockwise direction. So a current flows in the wire. But the current, the wire here, PQ is eh, in the a presence of the magnetic field, right? In the presence of magnetic field. So this is the current carrying wire, okay? Presence in the magnetic field. So you can use uh, Fleming's left hand rule to determine the direction of the force, okay? Uh, 
So uh, your thumb here shows direction of uh, B north to south and uh, your middle uh, finger okay, shows direction of current this way, okay, direction of current this way. So therefore the thumb shows uh, upward direction. So that's why the uh, the wire here lift up, yeah, okay, lift upward, okay, lift the wire off, okay, upward. Uh, so this is why it lift up right? and then why down okay so down okay this one lifts lift off okay upward so when when the it lift upward so therefore no current flows in it anymore okay because it lift the the where it touch point T touch point is at p and q so now there's no current flow through it because there is no current flow through it so the force just now magnetic force is no longer there eh? it's no longer here so therefore it back to fall to the guides here uh, because of its weight okay because of its weight okay so now uh, the process repeats itself okay uh, current no current then got current again and then no current so it leaps up and down okay when got current Carrying current carrying wire in the uh, uh, presence of the magnetic, uh, magnetic field, so will the the wire will experience a magnetic force eh, upward. When no current, no force, no magnetic force, so it fall down. Okay, because of its weight, so it keep on leaps up and down in the guides. So this is how to explain. Must have all these points, then you get full marks. Eh? Okay, so next we go to the question 12. Okay, question 12. We did the question. The horizontal component of Earth magnetic flux density is 2.0 times 10 to the power of negative 5 Tesla. Okay, so I just let I just want you all to be careful to aware of the magnetic flux density here. Sometimes in the question mentioned as magnetic field strength. Okay, sometimes mentioned as the magnetic flux density. Both uh, are the same meaning. Eh? Both have the same meaning. Okay, magnetic field strength, the unit also Tesla. Magnetic flux density, also the unit is Tesla. So you will know this uh, better okay, when we go to the next chapter actually. Eh? Uh, but both have same meaning actually. Eh? Okay, now uh, estimate the minimum current in a piece of copper wire of diameter 2.00 millimeter that would make the wire float in the earth magnetic field. Okay, then draw a diagram to show the relative directions of the current, magnetic field and force. So you are given density of copper is 9,000 kilogram per meter cube. Okay, so look at what is given the question. So you draw. Eh? So you let's say we choose the direction of magnetic field is uh, out of the screen. Okay, dot here shows direction of magnetic field or magnetic flux density is out of the screen. Okay, you can also use cross, but to discuss here, I use uh, dot. Eh? Uh, cross, cross also can. So, I use here dot. Okay, now we need a wire to float, this wire to float, but we don't know the direction yet. Eh? The question asks to give direction. So, for the direction of current, eh, uh, we need to uh, use Fleming's left-hand rule. Okay, but first we need to determine the force. Eh? Uh, what are the forces that act on the wire? The force that act on the wire. So to for the wire to float, okay, uh, we have um, weight and eh? the wire have weight. So for the wire to float, we must have magnetic force acting upward. So they balance, eh? they balance so that the wire can float. Okay, can float. So magnetic force must act upward. Okay, by this uh, force, you can determine the direction of current. Uh, use Fleming's left hand rule. After first step, you must know the force, eh? magnetic force, which direction. Okay, after you determine this uh, magnetic force, uh, then only you know the, you can use Fleming's left hand rule to determine the direction of current. Okay, so now use Fleming's left hand rule, position your hand like this. Okay, uh, even though uh, I cannot see you all, but I I believe uh, all of you now is doing eh? uh, is is doing this eh? uh, your hand eh? 
um, uh, use Fleming's left hand rule to show the direction of of what B. B is out of the screen there. Direction of current is this way. Okay, B. So F is upward. Then finally, refer to the middle finger shows direction of I is to the uh, left or right. It's a left, right? <laughs> Madam no, eh? left, eh? Okay. So that this is direction of current. Okay. Uh, so now this is a complete package of the answer but we don't finish yet uh, we forgot this one the minimum current right uh, so be careful with the question like this okay now we are going to determine this value of current that's why when you uh, you you answer this kind of question essay question you jot down eh? you jot down so like i do here i is question mark okay uh, so that i know what we haven't um uh do yet eh? uh, what we haven't uh do yet the, the answer for this question so now we are going to find the current eh? the current okay so now the current we use uh, f equals to mg because they are balanced okay f equals to mg and the magnetic force here f is bil they are already perpendicular to each other. So no need angles. Angle sine 90 is 1. So BIL equals to MG. So minimum current uh, will be I equals to MG per BL. Okay. Uh, so substitute all the values. Uh, but we don't know M. M not given. But it's okay because uh, we can calculate M from the density of the copper. Okay, density of the copper. So density of the copper given M per V. Okay? So this M, we can use rho V. Okay. We have another problem. Uh, v. v is volume, right? But uh, also no problem because we know diameter. Okay, diameter is given. So we have a few steps to, uh, to answer the I here. Eh? Few more steps before we come up with the I. I. So this is not direct question actually. So for volume, you can assume that the wire has a cylindrical shape. So cylindrical shape, that means we can use a cross-sectional area of the wire, pi r squared times the length of the wire. Can you all imagine that? Okay, hopefully you all can imagine that. Okay, so pi r squared L substitute into here. So L can be cancelled out. So that's why length of the wire not given in the question eh? because we don't use it. Eh? So cancel the L. So we just need, okay, density. Okay, we substitute 9,000 uh, kilogram per meter cube and then the right diameter, okay, uh, radius and eh? diameter divided by 2. Don't forget millimeter, convert to meter. Don't forget the square also, pi r squared. And G value 9.81 and lastly the magnetic uh, field 2 times 10 to the power of negative 5 tesla. Magnetic field strength or magnetic flux density. So the answer is 1.4 times 10 to the power of 4 ampere. Okay so that's the answer. Okay so how are you now? Still no comments there? Okay, someone please comment there so that huh, I know you are there with me, but I can see from the number of students now, eh, uh, I know you are there. Uh, don't just listen, uh, at least chatting, uh, chat there in the chat box so that I know you are there. Okay, so now we go to the next question. Question 12. Okay, question, uh, question 13 now. Okay, so we read the question. So the positions of three long straight vertical wires X, Y and Z carrying the same current in the directions shown in the figure are fixed. Okay, yeah. So the wires are equidistant from each other. So this is mean this means equilateral triangle. Okay, it forms equilateral triangle when you join all the wires eh, with the lines drawn here. Okay, mark with arrows the direction of the resultant force on each wire. Clearly show how you arrive at your answer. Okay, so to draw the uh, force, okay, to draw the force, 
make sure you draw the line uh, joining. Let's say we do 4x and z first, eh, the wire here. Okay, the current is opposite in direction. So that means the wire uh, repel, eh, repel each other. Same direction, uh, opposite direction of current. That means the two wires repel. Okay, uh, this one you will know. Uh, I didn't want to go in details on how we get it. Eh? So right now we just um, uh, we just concentrate on okay. If uh, different direction of current, they repel. If same direction of current in the two wires, they attract. Okay, okay. So they repel. So you draw it. Uh, make sure you draw the line uh, on uh, collinear with the line you drawn. Okay, uh, because this is a common mistake student makes when drawing. So the green green uh, color shows direction of the force for each wire is drawn, okay, uh, not at uh, collinear with the line joining with X and Z, these two wires. Uh, this is where problem, where students don't get marks eh, uh, because of uh, problems in their drawing. So be careful. Okay, hi Chia Yao. Okay, so as usual, <laughs> you are the... Uh, Peminat setia, right? Oh, Chia, Chia Yao, congratulations. Eh? You're still joining uh, non-stop. Eh? Uh, joining uh, the physics PU uh, tuition class. Eh? Okay. So next, uh, we do for uh, wire X and wire Y. Okay. So wire X and Y, okay, you see they are also uh, opposite direction. Eh? Uh, in direction current. So that means they repel each other. So they repel, you draw the X and Y uh, shown by the orange color arrow here. Okay, so make sure you draw it, uh, the, the arrow, okay, collinear with the line joining XY. Okay, collinear with the line joining XY. I repeat again, eh? collinear with the line joining XY. Uh, this Because this is common mistake student makes every year. Okay, they are not doing this eh, when draw, when when this line, these two uh, uh, direction of the force eh, is drawn. Okay, the arrow force of, of force is drawn. And lastly, wire Z and Y. Okay, wire Z and Y, they are, uh, the current is same. Okay, the current is in same direction. So, if same direction, so that means they attract each other. Okay, so you draw uh, uh, towards each other. Okay, towards each other because they attract. Okay, wire X, wire Z and Y attract each other. Okay, this is how you show the resultant force eh, on each wire. Mark with arrows the direction of the resultant force on each wire. Okay. Okay, so you label them for this uh, two, uh, these two force, okay. The resultant we call as FR1. Okay, you can draw parallelogram. Uh, because they are equidistant, so it is understood that eh, uh, the resultant will be straight vertically upward. Okay, uh, because they are uh, same in magnitude. Okay, so you use parallelogram method. So, or vector method. So, it is understood that FR1 is the first resultant force experienced by this wire X is particularly upward. Okay, what about these two? These two, the direction of the resultant force experienced by wire Z is this way. Okay, so use parallelogram method. Uh, and then lastly, these two, okay, the direction is FR3. Okay, so values all not given, so it's okay. The question also just ask to mark only, eh? To mark only. Okay, so we go to the to question uh, fourteen. So for question fourteen, okay, we continue. Uh, the next formula that you need to memorize is magnetic field. So you need to know for uh, for your level, okay, pre U level. So the using Ampere's law, okay, you get you derive this uh, magnetic field. So you get B equals to mu naught I per 2 pi D magnetic field around the uh, straight wire and magnetic field for the circular loop, okay, in the in the circular loop here is B given by B equals to mu naught and I per 2 R, okay, N is the number of turns of the coil 
coil or circular loop. And lastly, the B of the long solenoid is given by mu naught and I. N is number of turns eh, density. Okay, number of turns density. And per L, number of turns per length. Okay, so you need to memorize this. And why? Uh, how we derive this also you need to know. Okay, so this is the formula of magnetic field. Uh, for your level, we just uh, discussed these three kinds eh, of uh, uh, wire. Eh? Okay, so we try question 14. So two long parallel wires C and D are separated by a distance of 5 cm here. Okay, as shown in the diagram below. So the currents in C, C here are 2 ampere and 9.3 ampere respectively in D, eh? uh, D here. So derive an expression for the force per unit length acted on D, okay, due to current in C. Okay, then determine the magnitude and direction of the force uh, per unit length on D. Okay, so we do question A first. Okay, we are going to derive the force, eh? the force experienced by uh, this wire, eh? wire D. Okay, wire D. So, we draw uh, top view here. This is a three dimension. So, we use two dimension drawing. So, that easy to see. Eh? Easy uh, to determine the direction. Easy to see the direction of the current, uh, force and uh, current also. Okay, so current in C is this one. Use this wire D will experience a magnetic field by this wire. So this wire D will experience magnetic field by this wire C. So you use uh, Fleming, uh, you use grip rule to determine the direction of current experienced by this wire D. So use a uh, grip rule. So you grip this wire C. So that means the um, circle you see here eh, is actually the direct shows the direction of the uh, magnetic field, eh, magnetic field by wire C. So at this point on wire D, the direction at, at the point is tangent to the circle. Eh? Tangent to the circle. Okay, so this, this means the direction of B is uh, into the screen. Eh? Cross. Cross means into the screen. Look at the direction of the uh, arrow here. So at this point, at the point of the circular shape now of the B, okay, the direction is into the screen. So you make a cross there. Okay, now this wire D will experience eh, a magnetic field, uh, a force eh, by this wire C, okay, because of the pres in the presence of magnetic field by wire C. Okay, so magnetic at wire D, magnetic field at D is comes from the formula we use B equals to mu naught I C per 2 pi R, okay, for a straight wire. And then the direction of force, use Fleming's left hand rule. So this is current direction. B the cross here into the screen. Okay, into the screen. And the direction of uh, thumb shows downward. Okay, so the force is downward. Okay, for a wire, the direction of the force is downward. Okay, the given by F equals to BIL. Okay, you use formula for a straight wire. For magnetic force is BIL. So the B here is B comes from the wire C. So B for the straight wire is mu naught I C per 2 pi R. So now we combine these two. Okay, we combine these two. So you substitute into the equation. And then L, no need because L we bring to the left side. Eh, it's become force per unit length because the question is one force per unit length. So we can bring L to the right side. Eh? The question doesn't want force. The, the question is one force per unit length. So it's become F D per L. So we just write as F. Okay, now substitute B into here. And there we got the expression eh, for the force per unit length on wire D. Okay, due to current uh, in wire C. Okay, this is the answer. Hopefully you all understand. Okay, so this is the derivation usually asked in the essay question. Okay, now we go to question B. Question B, determine the magnitude and direction of the force per unit length. Okay, so now we are going to calculate the magnitude. Direction we know already, okay, here downward. Okay, so for the magnitude, we use this formula, continue with this formula by substituting all the values uh, given in the question. 
Okay, so we use this equation and substitute all the value. Mu naught is 4 pi times 10 to the power of negative 7. I see ID 2 ampere, 9.3 ampere and the distance between the two wire is 5 centimeter convert to meter and the force uh, per unit length is 7.44 times 10 to the power of negative 5 newton per meter. Okay. And they repel each other eh? because they are opposite in direction. You see, they are opposite in direction. So, they repel each other. Okay. So, direction of the force is away from C. So, we write here away from C because referring by to this diagram. Okay. If referring to the diagram just now downward, but referring to this diagram is away from wire C. Okay, right? Okay. So, I think... Uh, uh, finish already eh? all the question okay so thank you for watching and i give back to madam noon eh? okay madam noon okay thank you madam rosmaya with god grace we, uh, we have reached the end of today's lesson congratulations congratulations to those who are able to follow our lesson from the beginning till the end before we end our session today i will announce the last two digit code for the credit claim so the last Two digit code is zero four. Okay, zero four. So all of you, please stop posting your comment for a while and click the subscribe button and activate the icon bell so that you will not miss the next class lesson. Then, if you find that the lesson was beneficial, click like and share to your friends on your social media. Spread and share the goodness. Once completed. Type done on the chat box before the certificate link is given as a token of thank you for your dedication in joining our free online class today. Okay, so I will put the link uh, for the certificate with, uh, and also the link for the credit claim. All right. So after this, you can uh, fill in these two links. Okay, so the link is there. And our presenter today is... Uh, okay, please take note that the link will end uh, half an hour after this live. Make sure to use the EDD email and MOE email only to log in. Incorrect email use will not be entertained. If you have any, uh, haven't got one, please apply. The link to apply the EDD email is already given in the chat box. Okay. Uh, you can refer to the chat box. So if you wish to get more information on the online classes, you can go to the www.academyyoutuber.com and to those who haven't joined EDD Junior Telegram, please do so. So once again, I would like to thank all of you for joining our class today you are very awesome feel free to share this free to share class to your friends and teachers all over malaysia this is a collection effort from all the teachers throughout malaysia for all the students throughout the country thank you for being a youtuber academy supporter too so i think that's all for now okay see you in another lesson remember the hashtag bermula percuma selamanya percuma okay so, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Stay safe till we meet again next week. At the same time, same day. Next same week. It's a holiday. It's a next week. Now we don't have oh, class. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, Hari Raya. Raya. Ah, Hari Raya. So, maybe we'll see you the next two weeks. Okay, thank you so much, my dear Smaya. So, that's all, everyone. Okay, bye. Wow, banyaknya hadiah menarik menanti anda. Wah, kini Akademi Youtuber mengambil inisiatif baru Di mana memberikan hadiah-hadiah ini secara percuma Ya, percuma kepada anda semua Hmm, bagaimana caranya dengan mengikuti kelas tuition online percuma Akademi Youtuber sambil mengutip mata kredit Anda dapat menukarkannya dengan hadiah-hadiah yang menarik ini Tunggu apa lagi? Segalanya percuma Jangan lepaskan peluang tau Dah
dapat banyak hadiah menarik tak akan nak lepaskan peluang Layari www.academyyoutuber.com sekarang untuk maklumat lanjut Dibawakan kepada anda oleh Academy Youtuber